If you're watching this video, you probably want to start a business, grow your side hustle to a full-time job, or you just have some entrepreneurial spirit inside of you that wants to know how other people have been successful at growing their businesses. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about outsourcing and finding clients, kind of getting your business off the ground, because I feel like those are a couple of the most difficult things that people don't discuss too much when they talk about starting businesses. I'm super excited to say that I'm partnering with Fiverr on this video. I've mentioned them in videos pretty much since I started this channel and they're finally sponsoring me. So super excited about that. I'll talk a little bit about how using Fiverr has helped me grow some of my businesses and how it could potentially be helpful for you. So as far as starting an online business, if you've watched any other videos on YouTube or searched for it on YouTube, you've probably seen these videos about people making ungodly amounts of money Money and how they went from like zero dollars to forty thousand dollars passively overnight if you're starting an online business or a freelancing business it's of course good to be ambitious about your goals but it's also important to actually have a realistic timeline of how long that's going to take so after college I started a graphic design and web design business and I took that from being a college student that had literally zero dollars to at one point doing over seven thousand dollars a month in rent revenue just from this freelance business that I had built up. For me, it looked more along the lines of this. That first month, mm, $200. And then when I hit that peak, those were in the ballpark of around $7,000. The time in between, about a year and a half. So definitely not an overnight thing. So eventually I stepped back from that business to focus on YouTube, but it was definitely my full-time gig for a while. And that's all a lot of people want is just to grow their freelancing business or their small business to a point where they can have it as a full-time job. So I'll walk through how I did it, the key things that helped me get to that point and what I would do differently if I were to start it all over again. So first you have to choose what your business is focused on and who it's actually for. It's super easy to get shiny object syndrome where you're just jumping from idea to idea without ever executing on any of them. I ended up creating a graphic design and web design business and a lot of you who watched the $15 an hour online jobs video want to do something along those lines or something like video editing or translation. So I'm going to be speaking from the perspective of a business that is providing a service to people, but the same overarching concepts will still apply even if you're doing like e-commerce or you're trying to do YouTube or social media as your business. Having a focus for your business and knowing what services you will and will not provide is going to be essential for you to get started. And whatever you do decide, that is what you are going to build your website or your freelancing profile files around. At the beginning, realistically, you are going to be spending way more time actually trying to find clients and customers than you are doing the actual work. And this can be kind of a frustrating process, which is why a lot of people will quit after a couple of months or even a couple of weeks. So my biggest tip for actually finding your first clients or customers is that if you're starting out this business as a brand new thing, you have to have things that you can actually show people. This is going to mean taking time out of your day to do personal projects that actually show off your skills. Maybe it's doing free projects for friends or family or local businesses. The goal here is that you have to build a portfolio of work. Even if you are not in a visual field like graphic design, Design, you have to have examples regardless of the type of business. For example, if you have a writing business, no one is going to hire you to write if you don't provide examples of things that you have written in the past that they can read. On the same token, if you have a translation business, you need to provide a few examples of documents that you have translated in the past. How I got started was I took some time to do some personal projects. I wasn't getting paid for these. These weren't even for real businesses. They were just examples of the type of work that I could do and that I wanted to do. 
After I had some of those, I found a local restaurant that had a really bad basic website. I emailed them and asked them if I could come and take some photos and redo their website for free. They said yes, and after I completed that project, I added it to my website and to my portfolios as an example of a quote unquote real project that I did for a real business. No one else needed to know that I did that for free. It just provided an example and a reference that people could have of a real business that I had actually done work for. Pretty soon after that, I was able to get a paying client who was also in the food industry that needed something similar done. So that free project that I did was really a stepping stone. You do want to be careful with free work. After you just do a couple of free projects that you want to do yourself, you really shouldn't be doing free work after that. People really shouldn't be asking you for free work, but you can use your own discretion to decide whether or not a project would be worth it doing it for free just to add it to your portfolio. But again, you should really only be doing that at the very beginning. So once you build up those examples of work, the next question is how do you actually price your business's services? For this, what I recommend doing is finding another business or another freelancer that offers the same quality of work. It does not matter what their education is, where they're located, when people are hiring you, they really do not care about that. They only care about the quality of your work. So the key here is that you have to be honest with yourself about the quality of work that you can do and find other businesses and freelancers that are on a similar level. You're going to see what their range of prices are and decide what you want to eventually aim for for your pricing. The goal when you're first starting out is to get those client and customer reviews so that people know that you're legit and a good person to work with. That way people will want to hire you. So it's best to start out with lower pricing just to get some of those reviews in and then you can start gradually increasing your prices with each project or each new client. As you start bumping up those prices, you can start cycling out those older lower paying clients and I'll talk more about that a little bit later. On that little graph that I showed you of business revenue, what took it from here to here was raising prices but it was also outsourcing work and hiring other freelancers and contractors to help me piece together bigger projects. As far as outsourcing work, it's definitely one of the best ways to start scaling your business but it also helps you focus on the things that are actually important to your business business, you don't need to be getting distracted with things that you could be hiring out or things that you honestly are just not good at. For example, if you're wanting to sell cool t-shirts, but you are a terrible artist, you have no artistic ability, then you should be hiring out those t-shirt designs. If you're spending hours of your time trying to figure out your logo and branding and like putting your website together, that's something else that you should probably be outsourcing instead of spending hours and hours just struggling through that. Or another example is if you want to offer people an email marketing service, but you aren't great at copywriting or you aren't great at email design, you can outsource that too. Really, the main idea here is that you want to outsource things that are not worth your time or that you're not good at. So one of the websites that I have used many, many times to find freelancers and outsource work is with today's sponsor, Fiverr. Fiverr is a leading marketplace that connects businesses with freelancers offering digital services, including things like graphic design, digital marketing, writing, translation, video, animation, music, audio, etc., etc. You can read all of these in this menu. Each gig on Fiverr has a clearly defined scope, a duration, and a price, and you can also see other buyers' reviews of different Fiverr sellers. So I actually want to show you guys how easy it is to use Fiverr. I'll show you a couple of things that I actually ordered, and as far as outsourcing goes, this will kind of show you how you can use Fiverr to piece together different things from different freelancers to help you in your business. Okay, so this first gig that I ordered is actually a logo design. As far as finding sellers on Fiverr, you do really want to take your time to look through all of the different gigs that are available. And I would recommend trying to find a freelancer that already does stuff in the style that you are looking for. For this logo, I wanted something that was clean and minimal. So I found this guy, Ollie, and his examples of his work looked really good. So I wanted to give 
give it a try. Before I ordered it, I messaged him. That's kind of just a good courtesy thing to do on Fiverr. Always read their descriptions of their gig first, and they'll often tell you whether or not they want you to contact them first, but it does give them a chance to let you know what they need from you, and it can give you a better idea of whether or not that freelancer is going to be a good fit for what you need. He was super quick at getting back to me. I made sure that the gig package that I wanted actually included everything that I needed, and then I went ahead and ordered it. I had to send over some examples of styles of logos that I liked. A couple days later, he got that logo back to me, and it was pretty much exactly what I was looking for. I could have asked him for a revision if I wanted because that was included with my package, but I really liked what he did, and I also kind of wanted to see what would happen if I sent that logo to another freelancer that did branding design and see what they would come up with based off of that logo that he made. I spent a while looking through some of these options and I found a woman in Paris that I felt was reasonably priced and I really liked her work. So I wanted to see what she would do with that logo from Ollie. So I went ahead and messaged her beforehand to make sure that it was a good fit. Then when I placed my order for the gig, I sent her all of the information that she needed as well as some mood boards and different style ideas so that she could again get an idea of what I was actually looking for. So using that original logo plus some of the mood boards that I sent her, she was able to pick out fonts and brand colors that I felt really matched what I had sent her. And I was actually really impressed with both of these sellers because off of the references that I gave them, they really matched those styles really, really well. So I will leave links to both of their profiles in the description so that you can check them out if you like their work. This was a super seamless and easy process and I think it came out great. And it's also kind of cool to see how the second freelancer was able to work off of the first freelancer's work. And I think that just goes to show you how efficient you can be with your time once you actually start outsourcing and once you know what you want and you can have these freelancers start building off of each other's work to really create something cool for your business. So if you do want to try out Fiverr for your own business or even for your own personal use, definitely check out that link in the description and get started. All right, so something else that I feel like people don't talk about is what do you do once you have some clients and customers for your business? What if one of those clients you just absolutely cannot stand or cannot work with? At some point, you probably are going to come across a client that is just not a good fit for whatever reason. It's best to try to avoid working with these clients in the first place if you feel like there's something that's going to be a little bit off or if they're like really trying to haggle your price down or anything like that. But sometimes you may accidentally take on one of your clients or you may just need to start cycling out some of those old clients like I mentioned earlier as you are raising your rates. I've found that with either scenario, the best course of action is that when you're telling them that you cannot work with them anymore, it's best if you can refer them out to other people. If you actually refer them to someone who may be able to help them better than you can, it will make it easier to actually end that working relationship with them, and it'll end it on better terms than if you're just like, okay, peace out, bye, good luck. Also, as a side note, never pretend that you can do work that you can't do or don't know how to do unless you intend on hiring someone within your own business to actually do what that client is asking for. In that case as well, it's better just to refer them out to someone else so that they aren't disappointed with the work that you don't know how to do and so that you aren't stressed about trying to do it yourself. So my recommendation would be early on, start trying to build relationships with other businesses and other freelancers that you can refer people to in the future if you need to. With some of these people or businesses, you may actually be able to negotiate a referral fee with them, especially if your industries kind of work well together. So for example, if you do website design and you have a freelance copywriting friend, you may be able to kind of give each other business by sending people who may be looking for the other service. But sometimes this can get a little bit complicated if you're asking other people for referral 
hotel fees. So an easier way to go about this is to actually find a freelancing service that has an affiliate program. So that basically just means that you will earn a small referral commission every time that someone uses your affiliate link and actually buys something. And you guessed it, Fiverr has this too. So if you have a web design business and a client comes to you and is like, make me a logo, or if you have a business writing resumes and a client comes to you and is like, ghost write my novel on giraffes or just anything else that doesn't fit into the scope of work that you do or that you want to or know how to do then you can just be like hey i am so glad that you reached out to me for this unfortunately i don't currently offer that service but i can refer you to this person on fiverr who specializes in that then you would send them your affiliate link to that person's profile and when they purchase a gig from that person you would actually get a decent commission off of that. And of course, if you have a blog or a YouTube channel or really a following on any social media platform, you can share those affiliate links and get a lot more eyes on them and actually make a lot of money from it. But I do also think that it's a good option just from that business to client relationship standpoint to solve some of your headaches within your own business. So what would I do differently if I was doing this all over again? I think the first thing is that I would raise my rates sooner. I kept my business's rates a little bit too low for a little bit too long. The second and probably biggest thing would be outsourcing sooner. There were so many wasted hours where I was trying to figure things out that I was just never going to get to a point of figuring out and I would end up hiring someone to help me with little things anyways. So that is something that I would definitely do sooner rather than later. Just to save myself some of that stress and that time that I could have used to work on more important aspects of my businesses. Another thing that I should have done is document my processes better. This is something that I should have been doing from day one and that I wish someone had told me to do. So if you ever have anything that you even remotely think that you'll want to outsource in the future or pass on to someone else or even look back at, you need to somehow be documenting it. This can be anything from how you onboard clients to templates that you use to reject clients that don't seem like a good fit to actual processes in your business that are behind the scenes or how you handle certain situations or get certain things done. Another reason why I procrastinated on outsourcing for so long was because I didn't have that documentation. And so then I would tell myself that it's just faster to do it myself than to explain it to another person. And that is because I didn't have any of it documented. But if I had that, it would have been super easy to just pass it off. I also wish that I had started building relationships with other freelancers and businesses a little bit earlier on. It's good to build a network of people that you trust, that you could potentially work with in the future, that you could potentially refer other people to. And in general, it's just a good idea to have a network of people who are business business minded and in the same industry as you. That way you can kind of compare and contrast notes and you have a fun little group to work with if you ever need tips or other ideas. So hopefully this helps you out and hopefully some of those Fiverr tips were kind of helpful for you. I know that I've had great experiences as a buyer on the platform and if you need branding, logo, a voiceover, video editing, or anything else for your business, definitely go to Fiverr.com and I've added the links to those two freelancers that I worked with in the description. And in a couple of months, I'll actually do another update video where I share how much I have made from the Fiverr affiliate program. So be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss that video and I will see you guys next time.